I'm gonna try and slam through a really quick head left right rig for you. I keep threatening to do this. This is one of the things that I didn't get round to doing during my official Moho webinar and I really meant to. Luckily I got the chance to go to Annecy and I replicated this tutorial about nearly 10,000 times. Maybe I'm exaggerating. There will be some nice interesting and hopefully important tidbits throughout this video so even if you do know how to rig ahead stick around follow along with me. I hope you'll find it helpful. I'm an animator in the UK. I'm also a rigger in the UK. I was building rig supervisor on the Puffin Rock feature film, um, but I've animated mostly in children's TV and I have animated many dancing moons for some reason. They tend to crop up time and time again. So this, this rig featured in my line boil video and I'm going to just do the exact same thing, but from scratch. So here is a moon. He's got two controls, some eyes, some spots, really, really simple, but really effective. So let's just open a new file. I'm going to make this really simple. I'm going to use primary shapes, as fewer layers as possible. So I'll make a circle, whoops. And I want to get that right in the middle of my scene. If I wanted to do this really, really accurately, I might even enable the grid, control G. Sometimes I do. Uh, Q, select shape. I'm going to change the colors. So I'll open my style window. My style window is here. Maybe I'll have a nice light moon color. I want a big stroke. I want the stroke to also be blue, but not the same blue. Cool. Head. There we go. One circle. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call that eye left. Oh, I already hate it. <laughs> I don't know left or right. Screen left over this side. Nope. Don't feel like I know that's true. Doesn't matter. Let's go. Let's do this really quick. Okay. So I'm going, I'm just trying to line this up a little bit around those crosshairs. I want it to be not round, not perfectly symmetrical. Q on the keyboard. Let's change this to white. Cool. And then I will pupil L for the next layer. And again, asymmetrical, line that up roughly near the middle, change that to black, both of those. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I am going to group each of these and then I'm going to group them again and I'll tell you why as I go along. So I'm going to group the pupil. I'm going to group with selection. You can do that two ways. Group with selection. Whoops. I. And then I'm going to select them both and group them again. Group with selection. I. I'm going to call this I1. Now I'm going to set the pivot points of each one of these. I'm going to leave I1 where it is actually, but I'm going to set the pivots of the people into the middle and the eye itself maybe down the bottom. This is going to give me options later on for the animators. Um, I'm always as a rigger trying to solve the next problem down the line. If an animator has to animate that eye, it's going to want it to squash and stretch from the bottom maybe. Uh, that's why I do that. So I'm going to duplicate this layer, I2. The pivot point is already right in the center of this circle. So all I have to do is flip it, boom, I have a second eye. And inside my pivots are set just how I want them. And that's why I do that. Now when I'm making my controls later, all the animation on my action in, in my smart bone action will be on these groups and not the layers themselves. So when I'm moving it around, I'm going to keep this free, but I will move the people. I will move the eye instead. And that will become really important later. Hopefully I will show you why. Okay. Boop, boop, little head. I'm going to group these with selection now, all the layers, and I'm going to call it moon. Great. And I'm going to right click, uh, convert to bone. Sweet. I am going to draw one bone. And if I was being really nitpicky, I might move that over. Just want it to be in the middle. Uh, and if I was being even pickier, you got damn right, I would name my bone. Cool. So now we have a head bone. And everything in this layer now is able to be affected by this bone. Awesome. Uh, but we want to do head left right controller, correct? Yes, correct. So I'm going to draw a new bone for that. It's going to act as the controller. I'm going to call this head left right. 
I'm going to um, select the bonds, bond constraints in the menu. I want to constrain the angle. Uh, 1770 will be fine. I want the label showing. Cool. And I want to take the bond strength off it because I'm just using it as a controller. I do not want it to do anything else. I don't want it to have any influence. So I'm going to open my favorite window in Moho. Control K, actions. Yay. I don't need my style now. I can put that somewhere else. And I'm going to create my first action for this head left right rig. So new action, head left right. Yes, please. I'm going to pick an arbitrary number on the timeline, but 100 is usually where I start. That is a nice four second um four second timeline. I'm going to change all my keys to linear for this. I want the animators to be in control of the motion so that my controllers should be on ones and linear. They can choose the spacing and timing and what have you. So here now where this bond is set here, I am going to give my layers new positional information. So if the bond is facing right, then the eyes have to go right and I'm going to use the groups. So I1, let's start with that one first, frame 100, pull it over, I2, pull that over. In fact, I'm just going to undo that. Why not select them both at the same time? Easier. So when I've pulled this over, what I will then want to do for I2 is depress it ever so slightly. Now I'm just going to play through my timeline and see if I'm happy with that. I've noticed that zero key is still smooth. I have to constantly turn that back to linear. Oh, look at that. That's because I haven't done it on both. Linear. Grand. Now, um, I tend to eyeball these up here. So 0 0.3 in one position, 0 0.3 for the other one. I want to do the same the other way. So it might be minus 0 0.3. It's just something I want to keep in mind with these. Um, I'm going to leave it like that. So that is my head left. Or right. Oh God, I'm so sorry. I do not know left and right. I'm going to choose this bone. I'm going to click new action, head left, right two. And on frame 100, exactly the same thing the other way. Switch it there into its um, extreme position. And then I'm going to grab the eyes and do the exact same on this way. Now, yes, look at this. I will write. 0.3 minus 0.3 so it's exactly the same on this side and then I nope I1 is the one that I want to depress backwards cool now there will have been um, a scale obviously and the other one and I want to match that so I'm going to go back to here my first action and I'm just going to see I2 78% okay great good to know Oh, it's nearly, nearly, nearly. I just want to be that accurate though. I mean, that barely changed, did it? But like, if you were rigging for this, uh, you rigging on a TV show or in a proper pipeline, uh, numbers like that matter. Great, okay. Up, down. Let's put some animation in here now. Left. Just control F to put a key on every frame. Um, and then a big turn here. So this is the animation that I currently have available to me. Awesome. Let's make this nice though. Maybe there can be some rotate, rotate. Maybe there's even some translate, dancing moon, remember? Gonna do some squash and stretch. Oh, I've spotted something I've forgotten already. Ta-da! I want to add onto this bone, on this bone, the big main head bone, squash and stretch scaling. It's free squash and stretch. Why would you not? Turn these all to smooth and put it on twos, my favorite. And let's just reset the scale at the end. Cool. Oh, where's it moving? <laughs> Ta-da! How quick was that? Less than 10 minutes. Maybe not. I was aiming for like five minutes. Maybe it's not five minutes. But there you go. 
So the really important principles I want you to take away from this, and you can carry on with your head left right, like it doesn't have to stop at 70, de uh, 70 degrees like mine did. You can keep going, you can keep going. But what I want you to take away from this is using groups almost like null objects or um, empty bonds or something that can hold positional information instead of the vector layers themselves. The vectors might need to be animated later on by animators. And also we could free these up for another smart bone action like a blink or something on the eye. That would be very easy to do now because the vectors are free. And the head left right is operating those folders, those groups, rather than the vectors themselves. It solves a problem down the line when an animator wants to, or a boss even, wants to change the design. So that's why I do that. Have a go at that. If it's your first time using Moho, ooh, I'm so excited for you. See if you can slam out a head left right turn like that. And you can do the exactly the same with a head up down. And you can use different folders if you needed to. And it will keep all those vectors free. Have fun rigging. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Bye.